Hello, Grebos, and welcome back to downloadable content. And do you hear that sound? It must be Monday because it is Mod, Mod Showcase, Showcase Monday. Monday. This week, I'm actually going to be doing things a tiny bit different. That is right. I'm going to show you all the quality of life mods that I use because I keep getting asked about it. So I figured I'm going to put it in a kind of rapid fire mod showcase where I'll try not to cut away. Just this beginning, the middle, and the end. You're not going to want to miss it. So without further ado, let's dive in. First up is Portable Books by Kai Devi. So now when I actually open up my menu book, I'm gonna have a ton of new options here. So I can select the backpack here and have access to pretty much my full inventory of mods that I want to spawn from. So if I'm anywhere in the map, I can select a dagger, common dagger, and equip right from the book. So to me, this is like an essential mod. I, I, I need it for live streams, I need it for dungeon runs. It's all here and it's very exciting. And I, if you guys don't have this one already, you absolutely need this one. It's available as beta in Kai Devi's Discord. Up next is Health Modifier by Anishka. So what you're gonna do is select this little heart right here. So you have access to player's health and enemy's health. So what you do is you select the arrow and then you can select the percentage. I really like putting the enemies at about 300, maybe 350% is a pretty good feel. You can leave yourself on default, or if you want to, you know, kind of do the same thing, you can increase your value to 300 to match them. So I feel like this is a really good spot for combat. Uh, when I'm in the dungeon, um, a like you could stab them and slice them a couple times, and they're still good to go. Up next is Soviet's Extra Effects by Soviet Cat. So what this does, it adds new effects to things like weapons and other items when you collide with them. So now, when I hit them, you're gonna see these cool like little sparks and everything fly off. That is pretty sick. Yeah, yeah, pretty awesome. And then when you hit things like rocks, little pebbles will break off of it. Look at the little pebbles, look at them. Pretty cute. And then when it comes to wood, you'll have a little splintering wood. Look at that, mm, yeah, yeah. I love using this one. I honestly forgot I had this in there. I thought this was part of the base game and then everyone was asking me about my effects and I was like, wait a minute, that's definitely a mod. So you absolutely need this. Our next essential mod is the NPC spawner spell, which you can go into your book and select this little action man. So this little action man will enable you to select from the creatures you have. So if you also have compatible things that are NPCs, you can spawn them using this utility. From here, you can sit, change things from fireball to pointer. I leave this as fireball and change between the dummy. I'll show you that in a second. From here, you can actually set how much health they're gonna have and how many of them you wanna spawn at a time. You can go nuts and break your computer. So be very careful with the amount that you're gonna do for quantity because you can really do some crazy stuff. So I'm just gonna select humans and close my book. So now when I go into my spell wheel, I'll select the NPC spawner. If you're just holding the trigger to cast, it's gonna be white, this is neutral. So when you cast it, it's just a regular dude. He's just straight up chilling here. They won't fight back. They're just, you know, basically static. But while holding it, and then if you do the grip, it'll change. So now when I go to cast it again, red, that means this one's gonna be an enemy. So this one is kind of down to clown. Oh, cool, an enemy anyway. So let's just quickly get rid of him. And then of course, if I do it one more time and grip, it's gonna be blue. So this one is gonna be an ally. So now when an ally and an enemy meet, well, I sure you could understand what's about to happen. Go my Ricky, you will win for me. I really hope mine wins. That one's mine, right? Oh damn, oh no Ricky. Moving on, we have Lift Anywhere by Pipop. This is something that I feel should be in the game, but it's a mod right now. So let's spawn another person. So normally with Blade and Sorcery, you can really only lift them basically from their neck area, like when you're choking them, get their feet off the ground. But Lift Anywhere, well, enables you to lift them from anywhere. I can grab over here and lift them without them falling. So you don't have to be ridiculous about it. You could also grab them from the shoulders, like so, and still be able to lift them. For me, this is an absolute essential mod. I use it every single update, and I don't understand why it's not already a mainstay of the game, but honestly, as long as it stays as a mod, it works this well, I'm all for it. Up next is the Wings mod by Chilio X, also a BDM for as the original creator of this one. But what this enables you to do is fly around basically anywhere in the map. So what you do is you're going to press your jump button and then press the jump button again. So jump, jump. So now I'm floating. So I'm gonna use the sticks and the headset to kind of like travel wherever I want. 
You could also use a different mod to increase the speed of this one, but this pretty much enables you to, well, use your wings and fly wherever you want. It's great for exploring maps, or it's great for just being in the dungeon and messing around. For me, this one is a super essential, just because I, I use it all the time while I'm making videos and everything, so you need it. And when I want to stop flying, I just press the jump button again. Make sure you turn off, you know, fall damage, otherwise this will kill you. Up next is Realistic Bleeding by Zonico, and I've heard a lot of people saying that this mod does not work for them. It does. In your manifest, you just have to update it to 11.0.0. It's pretty straightforward, you can get it done. But realistic bleeding enables you to slash them pretty much wherever and well, they're gonna bleed. Let's take my dagger here and give this man a nice wound like right here, make it brutal, just ugh. Look at that, a nice slash and he's gonna be dripping with blood and the blood is gonna be able to drip on other things as well. This thing is so badass and I really hope this makes it into the main version of the game without it being a mod because it's fantastic, just ugh. Drip with blood. Oh, bleed realistically for me. Oh no. So that's realistic bleeding. Moving on, we have the mod configurator by Hugh Johnner. So what that does, it gives you this little like gear with a hammer symbol on it. Let's go ahead and select that. The mod configurator gives you an in-game menu where you can mess around with most of the mods you have installed without having to restart your game, which is fantastic. So if I wanted to go to my wings mod and mess around with the flight settings, I can. I can go, I could turn it on and off. I can go super fast, wh wherever. This one enables me to essentially mess around with JSON files without having to, you know, have a big brain. Mod configurator. You absolutely need this one. Just a special note, not every single mod you have downloaded will appear in here, meaning you can't update it in game, but most of them you absolutely can. Like this player lip sync one. Look at all these settings right here. I would not be able to do it without my mod configurator. Up next is the Ultra Violence Overhaul Audio by Magma Cow. So what this does, it, it changes the actual sound that weapons make and enemies make when you hit them. Listen to this. Mm. I don't know if, if it's, I've been using this for so long that, <laughs> um, I forgot what the, the main version sounds like, but just listen. All right, let's spawn someone so I can show you something else. Now the enemy's also going to speak and I want you to ignore that for right now. Just listen to the sound it makes when I do my plunging attack. Did you hear that nice, that, that like curdle, just a when it hits them, listen. That's the ultra violence audio overhaul. You can really hear it really well in slow motion. Ignore them and their super pain. That's another mod I'll show you in a little bit. Up next, we have Painful Death by Sushin. Now, what this one does is when an NPC dies or gets hit, they're gonna make some, well, new sounds rather than just like the basic stuff. Look at our friend here. Let's take his weapon and, well, listen to the sounds that he makes. You hear that? He's coughing up his, well, uh, juice box. Maybe this guy will die more horrifically. Come on, bud. We need to hear it. Can you make noises? Maybe a nice lung stab will kind of get it. You can hear him cough though. There you go, he hit a nice little Ricky scream. So painful death gives them, well, new sounds and stuff when, well, they're dying. Painfully. Up next is Survivable Dismemberment by Total Concentration. And this does pretty much exactly what you need it to. It has them survive dismemberment. But remember earlier when I went into my book and I showed you how to increase enemy health? That's why it's a good little point, 300%. Because when you chop arms and off, sometimes they still die. And that's why I increase them. So let's take out this nice Yamato and well, hua! So we've got rid of this man's leg. It's just kind of like, boop. And look at him. He's just... Well, suffering. <laughs> His leg is over here, independent of him. It's not going to snap back unless you kind of resurrect them. That might make it snap back. But you can pretty much get most of the stuff. See, like his hand. He's still kind of suffering. And then we'll get eh, your elbow. <laughs> and I like how they wiggle around on the ground. It's uh, great for the ambiance, but this is survivable dismemberment. Make sure you pair it nicely with the health modifier and you will not be disappointed. 
Up next is Sheath Framework by Hugh Johnner. This is a mod I just absolutely love, and when it's done and utilized correctly with weapons, it's absolutely breathtaking. I'm gonna go into my little book here and spawn the Incursion Sheath. Look at this, ready? This mod right here, this is by Malacious, but this one here actually does, oh my God, just mwah, chef's kiss. Look at this, the mm, unsheaths it. And even if you kind of turn it like, you know, it kind of blocks you like, yeah, you can make a clip if you really want to, but this, this one right here is really gonna just look fantastic and listen to it. Oh my gosh, I could just sheath and unsheath this blade all day, but this is sheath framework. Oh my goodness. And of course, put it right back in that sheath. Oof. This sword makes great use of the sheath framework. Another weapon that makes fantastic use of sheath framework is Genix Yamato. Just look at this one. Ready? Mm. Ooh, yeah. I absolutely love this weapon. And this one actually even has skills based off it. But the cool thing is this can be used as like... A fighting style. I can do half of it and still hit him with the blade part, sheath, and then hit, also hit him with the scabbard and still pull it out. Yeah! I absolutely love sheath framework. You feel like a badass using it. Up next is our instant slow-mo silent by Genix. Now, a lot of people ask me if I use fast weapon handling or any of the weapon handling mods. I do not. I think they not ruin the experience of the game, but it changes the way the game was kind of, I don't know, meant to be played, uh, whatever. But with instant slow-mo and silent, it does one of two things. It turns off the heartbeat noise that you could also manually turn off in the book, but it also lets you instantly go in and out of slow motion by pressing the slow-mo button. Ready? Slow-mo, not slow-mo, slow-mo, not slow-mo. So when you're fighting, so let's spawn someone. So now when we're fighting, I can go in and out of slow motion and make it still look, you know, really cinematic and cool. Uh, so that was me fighting in and out of the instant slow-mo with using instant slow-mo silent. Up next, we have the Spell Wheel Enhancer by Davy3684. This one is pretty straightforward. When you press and hold your spell wheel, now it will help you organize the actual spells themselves. And when you go to select one of them, it tells you the name of the spell, which is super helpful, especially when spells start to share kind of like the same... Well, a lot of the similarities are their runes. So this one is an absolute must for organizing your spells. Our penultimate entry on today's Mod Showcase Monday is Stabby Arrows by Hobomatic. Let's spawn an archer. So normally in the game, it's really difficult, near impossible to stab with just the arrows if you want to use them as, well, a weapon or utility. So I'm just going to be able to grab this now. And from here, of course, I can still block with this one, but Stabby Arrows makes it, well really easy to stab with these arrows. So if I was using a bow, I could be like, block, block, stab, and then quickly switch it to, you know, arrow mode <laughs> and just fire it from the bow. Look, stab, stab, and then drop it back, grab it from my bow and fire. Wow, of course I would miss. You made me look dumb in my own mod showcase. Our final entry today is a mod I use all the time, and some people know what it is, some people don't, but I'm going to show you once again. It's Zendatsu by Genix. Zendatsu is a simple mod found in your spell wheel, and you really only have to cast it once, depending on how you set it in the book. So this is Zendatsu, and going back into my mod configurator, I can select Zendatsu from the book and turn on and off what I don't want. So you can say, I don't want it as a spell. I don't want it to use it well in slow-mo. I like to use it when it's, you know, in slow-mo. So what I've turned off is the spines and the blue tint. But when I use the spell, I can tell that I've used it. So I have it selected and I do it once and I'm going to get a blue flash. That lets me know it's active. So I'm going to unselect it by using, you know, my spell wheel. If I was to just unsheath my sword and swing at his torso, it's not going to cut him in half because I'm not in slow motion yet. See? But if I were to go into slow motion right now and swing towards his torso, now you can see that I've cut him in half. So you can control this however you want. You can say no spell, or you want the blue tint, or you want the spines. Having the spines is cool because when you chop them in half, they'll drop a blue spine and you could pick it up, crush it in your hand, and still heal yourself. I love using this mod because I get to control if I cut them in half or not, you know, <laughs> which is sick. So I absolutely love this. 
And there you have it, my friends. These were most of, if not all, the quality of life mods that I use on a daily basis to make videos or just to play around. So I'm happy to share them with you because they are freaking awesome. Remember to check the description because they're all linked down there. And while you're there, why not subscribe? It's free. All you have to do is click the little button and join up. I am still <laughs> trying to get to 100,000 subscribers by Christmas. It might happen. Maybe. Maybe a Christmas miracle. Who knows? But I'm counting on you, little Joshua. Don't let me down, Joshua. Anyway, thank you so much for stopping by. I am Rob from Downloadable Content, and I will see you in the next video. Oh,